Uh, no, can I get a Sharpie though? Yeah. Just so I can sign stuff. Yeah, for you. yeah thank you. Thanks, man. <laughs> Welcome back to the interview area. We are here with champion of the 122nd US Open. Matt, how does that sound? Unbelievable. Yeah, it's uh yeah, it's just uh, the feelings out of this world. It's um it's so cliché, but it's stuff you dream of as a kid and uh yeah, to achieve it, uh, I can retire a happy man tomorrow. So, <laughs> There were so many expectations on you this week that probably made this even harder. What have you learned about yourself? I think there were expectations, but I, I didn't feel like, I didn't feel them, uh, in my opinion. Um, you know, the, the field's such a, such a strong field, so many great golfers playing. Um, but I think for me, obviously the expectations were me, for me to play well, but I feel like having won the US Amateur here as well. I just felt so comfortable around this place. Uh, nowhere to hit it, nowhere to miss it. Um, and um, yeah, just happy to be uh, unbeaten around this place. We're gonna open up to questions right here, Brentley. Did you believe in destiny before this week? And if, if not, or if so, do you now believe in it? Uh, yes and no. Um, well, actually, no, I'd say yes. Um, but Billy, Billy had been saying for a while, you know, it, the time will come, it, you know, you, you're playing so well, just just keep doing what you're doing, it'll come, it'll happen, it'll happen. Um, I put myself in position after two rounds and then played well yesterday and I just thought that, you know, this 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 could be it, you know, this, this really could be it, this is the time. Um, and yeah, it, it just, it, it, for whatever reason and because of my success here before, it just felt like this this was the this was the time. So we're gonna go far right to Brendan. Fitz, congratulations. Thank um, you. The shot on eighteen, your approach. Can you walk us through? You walk up, you see it, um, and, and trying to decide. Okay, you know, play it safe, go for it. What, what was going through your mind there? Yeah, I, I'll be honest. One thing that I've been really struggling this this year with is fairway bunker play. Um, had a good session at USPJ with my coach. It kind of helped me a, a little bit, but uh, still not 100% out of it. And then I kind of, one good thing is it, it, the way the lie was, it forced me not to go towards the pin. It kind of forced me to go well left anyway. And if I hit it straight, it was kind of a chip across the green or whatever it was. Um, but I just feel like, you know, I'm a fast player and when I look back it just all happened so fast it was like uh, just kind of natural ability took over and and just played the shot that was that was at hand if I was a junior trying to hit a you know trying to hit it close and I didn't mean to do that but I just committed to the shot we kind of planned and um, came out a bit squeezy fade and it was uh, yeah it was amazing so so if you're playing fast and you're just hitting the shot are is there any calculation of, okay, I'm up one, I can play it safe, or are you just, you see it, no, you decide I, you hit it? No, I, I just felt I had to hit the green. Uh, you know, if I could hit the green, if I made par, it, it puts pressure on Will. Uh, I, I knew full well Will was going to hit it close. He's one of the best approach players on tour. Um, that's the good thing about knowing your stats, you know who you're playing against. And uh, I knew he was going to give himself a chance, and when I hit that shot, I thought, okay, well, you know, at least I, I've got a chance too. Um, and I was a little bit worried I gave him the line. Uh, and I was saying to Billy that I um, I had that put in the uh, the amateur in the morning session in the final, uh, and I, I actually really fancied it, and I thought it turned more than than it did, and I practiced it in in practice as well. But um, I think the whole situation, I was just you know trying make a par in eighteen, and and you know put the pressure on him, force him to to make a make a birdie. We're gonna hear Kevin on the left. Matt Scotty was in here earlier, and he said, "I don't know how Matt's hitting it farther than he he was months ago. Maybe he's on the Bryson plan. What, what what's how did you do it? How did you remake?" Your I've done my drugs test, and it was negative, so we're all good. <laughs> um, I, I just you know since 2020, I spent a lot of time um, working with Mike Walker and uh, my, which is my coach and um, a biomechanist, Sasha McKenzie. So. We did a little bit then, and he gave me this uh, speed stick called the Stack. Um, 
I've been doing that religiously week in, week out. Uh, it's like going to the gym, basically. It's just an, it's like a training program. And uh, I'll be honest, it's, yeah, it's, uh, it's work wonders. Um, I feel like, you know, maybe three years ago, if I was in this position four years ago and I was playing with Will in the final group, I'd be like concerned that I'm going to be 15, 20 behind him. Um, and I was, you know, I felt comfortable all day that I was going to be, be past him, which to me gives me confidence, obviously going into the, the next shot, knowing that you've got less club. And um, I don't know, there's a bit of a mentality thing that when you're hitting it past people, it's, uh, it's quite nice. Can, I, can you just take us through what happened on 15? I mean, you guys wait for 10 minutes on 15. You hit it way right, and then you hit an unbelievable shot there. What, what was that sequence like for you? Yeah, I mean, I didn't realize how far right it had gone. I, I, I should have shouted four, so um, I hope I didn't hit anyone there. Um, but, you know, it's funny. I, I feel like all year we've just had moments where just not caught a break, you know, just not had a lie, just not had a bounce. And... Um, this time I get there and the ball's sitting perfectly. Um, I, and it was one of the best shots hit all day. It was a five iron from 220 and hitting it to 18 feet is, um, it was a great shot. So to, to do that and take advantage of the, the look that, the break that I had um, was, was fantastic. We're going to go to the right, Ben and then Alan. He stole my uh, thunder a little bit, but just back on the length, I know you keep your stats on everything as you go. So was there a moment after you started the training and whatever, where you went, okay, this is this is happening. Can you take me through the progression? Yeah, I mean, just before, probably end of 2020, I started doing it. Did it re did it loads over the winter, and I came to Abu Dhabi, and I felt like I was hitting it so far uh, in Abu Dhabi, um, and I shot a 62 in practice in the practice round, and I was like this is easy it's like you're just hitting it miles and then you wedge it on and hold the putt you know and um then as i played the season it was kind of the same thing i was you know hitting it decent and then i i came off it in 2021 around summertime a few things going off and and a couple of injuries and uh, i stopped doing it um but then towards the end of it it kind of coincided with when i was driving it poor is when i stopped so it, it's it's improved my driving not only length but just overall everything and um since i've been hard on it from the start of this this year um i've noticed a, an even bigger jump um and, uh, without without really feeling like i'm going after it i mean i saw where rory was on uh, i don't know what he hit off the tee but i saw where rory was i saw where john ram was on on five again don't know what john hit but for me just hitting driver and pitching it on the green was I, I actually didn't expect that this morning uh, I thought I was going to be short because a few guys I watched were, were shorter um, and that was kind of a real good indication of, of where I've got to can you hear the disbelief of the people that are watching you the seeing the little guy just smash it no I just don't think they have a clue yeah. uh, I think that they watch it come off the face they're like oh cool yeah but then actually when you get down there and it's it's a lot further further up there I think that's probably when you you, you, you realize far right to Alan uh, Matt, for those who don't hi, know, Alan. hi. <laughs> for those of us who don't know uh, Sheffield, what kind of place is it, and how did that shape you as a, as a person and a competitor? Uh, Sheffield, um, where I grew up playing gol golf, Hallamshire, um, windy, um, tough, tight, small, really small greens. All jokes aside, it's actually similar to here. You know, um, just doesn't have the length, um, but all, always really windy. Um, and you know when growing up it was kind of the same wispy high rough as well so you had to learn to control your ball flight and um you know chip well because you just weren't going to hit that many greens the town is kind of scrappy though right it's a steel town yeah but i, I love sheffield it's great <laughs> it's uh you know it's where i'm from it's where my uh, football team's from and um yeah it's where all my best pals are from so yeah i mean does it, do you feel like that's kind of your personality though that yeah i think so i think um you know not to like compare it to my football team but it's like we're always the i feel like i'm the same deal as not expected to do well not expected to su succeed and um you know i've won a major today so it's um yeah it, it, i feel like i certainly work hard for it and that that's kind of where where i've grown up from is that's the mentality of everyone around there it's kind of you know you you sort of um 
not it's not really it's not upper class at all it's kind of um i can't think of the words i've been out of the country too long uh but yeah it's uh, certainly like underdog mentality and and you know you work hard for uh, you work for what you get so we're gonna go right here to my side Hey, Matt. So Will described that second shot on 18 as ballsy to take, incredible to execute. Can you put into words what you think that shot is? Yeah, it's one of the best shots I've ever hit. Uh, there's no doubt about it. Um, yeah. You know, you look throughout the week, the shots that you hit and the different times, and um, it's strange because that probably is, you know, that's such a huge shot in the, in the moment. But I, I look, if I'm honest, I look back to, my three approaches into into 15, 16, and 17 is all really, really good shots. And um, 18 was kind of just a um, bit of hit and hope. <laughs> and, you know, all weekend long you've been nails. And to also see up close the guy you're paired with to match everything, sometimes pass. What did you have to tap into mentally? And where did you have to go to stay concentrated and focused on you to execute and obviously earned that trophy next to you. Yeah, that was the thing for me. I had to just concentrate on my own game, uh, concentrate on you know, the, the plan that we had to play the golf course, hitting, hitting shots in the right areas. And um, like I said to Billy before we went out, if I can hit 18 greens, then I'm going to be in good shape. And uh, for me, it was just never leaving myself short side, uh, which I didn't do once. Um, always leaving myself fat side of the hole and um yeah i would say that i'd argue that's one of my best ever approach uh, approach play rounds we're gonna go right here to phil uh, Matt, congratulations um, thank you you were talking earlier in the week about how winning a number of majors makes you a legend what's your target in mind now that you've got one six, six is the number six for, is yeah still the number that that's that's the number that's the number that we uh, yeah we all agreed on so I'm, i've got a bit of a way to go but it's a good start yeah. <laughs> well, has it, seriously has it given a given a taste for it i know it's only just happened but what sort of targets and what does this do for you going forward? Yeah, it's funny. After Shane won the Open, um, we were playing somewhere and um, he was telling me a story of one of his mates was giving him abuse or he wasn't playing very well or something. And he just said, uh, but it didn't really matter though because I just thought, well, I've won, an open, I've won a major. So um, I'll be using that one a lot uh, for when things aren't going my way. But uh, yeah, it's, it's definitely... You know, you want to go win more now. Uh, there's no doubt about that. I, but I'll just, I'll just keep doing what I'm doing. I, I, I'm not, not going to try and change things. I'll, I'll sort of probably have a sit down meeting with everyone and just try not to, you know, try and make the right decisions going forward. It's, uh, it's easy to sort of go off track. So um, just got to keep doing, keep doing what I'm doing, and um, hopefully more will come. But uh, yeah, I'm, I'm delighted with one so far. And sorry, just and the next one, obviously, St Andrews, very special, 150th Open. How much are you looking forward to that? Um, yeah, it'll be great. It'll be great. I love playing St Andrews. It's uh, it's a great golf course. Um, it's uh, it's going to be interesting, obviously, with the you know with the length and and everything. And now I'm a bomber. It's you know <laughs> I'll, I'll probably be driving most of the greens. So, um, but yeah, it's. Uh, I'm looking forward to it. I, I've got two weeks off now, which I couldn't be happier about. Um, get my head around a few things, and then um, yeah, and then I guess we'll uh, we'll go go to St Andrews. We're going to take one from the web, Webex. How did you end up working with Billy, and what do you think this win means to him after all these close calls and majors? It means the world to Billy. Yeah, yeah. It. Uh, I I can't tell you how much it means to Billy. It's unbelievable. It's. Um, I know it's something he's wanted for a long, long, long time. So. To do it today is just uh, is incredible, um, and we ended up working together. I, I was kind of in between caddies. Uh, he just split up with Lee, and and just happened to to work out. And um, it's so funny. He kept telling me on the first time on the job, he's like, "Yeah, I'll just do 25 weeks, and you know, maybe get a fill in for for the others." I think he's had about two weeks off in three, four years. So, um, yeah. We're gonna go here on the right. Mac, congratulations. Uh, very rarefied air. Anytime you're, you're occupying a record with Jack Nicholas, what does it mean to you to do something in this sport that only he has ever done in his career? Is it just me and Jack? It's just me and Jack. Yeah, only two men. Okay, yeah. Um, anytime you're sharing a record with Jack Nicholas, it's, uh, it's unbelievable. Um, so for me to, to have that as well is, uh, is incredible. And um, he called me up down there just at the presentation just to congratulate me and um, you know coming from someone like that uh, it, it means the world right here to my oh go ahead uh, just one more the, the crowd there on 18 seemed 
borderline out of control. How did you really keep the headspace there? It seemed like you had to fight your way through about... Yeah, I thought, I thought me and Billy ball. were going to get stampeded, but uh, we, we didn't. We were fine, but um, I love that. I, I love it when the crowd's, you know, excited and, and loud. It's... Uh, it's what makes it more exciting. Um, I love football and that's, you know, I love the atmosphere and that. And, uh, you know, I know golf's different and it's got to be all nice and calm and everything, but sometimes it's it's uh, it's good fun to, to be a bit different. Right here to my side. Matt, why this week, why this major compared to all of the other majors you've played in? Uh, this week, you know, around the country club. Uh, I've, I've won around here before. Uh, I love playing this golf course. It suits me so well, suits my game well. Um, and I've been playing well for a while, and uh, I think it all just fell into place that, that this was the place it was going to happen. With what you've talked about this week, with the, with the added distance, with the knowledge here, do you, do you think like your game has almost like evolved to this point where you can achieve this kind of success? Yeah, definitely, definitely. It's taken a few years, obviously, but um, I definitely feel in that position now, yeah. We're going to go to the right to Bamberger. Thank you. Uh, Bamberger, did you ever get uh, tired of Billy's Seve? A Billy's what? Billy's Sebi imitation. No, I love it. It's so funny. <laughs> it's the best. Uh, which reminds me, he needs to tell a story to someone, so uh, thanks for reminding me that. <laughs> uh, the other day I asked you about the intensity of that march to the bottom of the 72nd hole. It was Thursday night. Do you have any further appreciation uh, for that now? Yeah, absolutely. Um, uh, it, it's it's a long week. I said, I said to Billy going up... Uh, Going up 14, I said, Billy, I hate this. <laughs> this is horrible. <laughs> you know, and, and up to that point, really, I'd not really missed many shots. And, um, you know, I can't tell you how happy I'm, I am it's over. But at the same time, I can't tell you how happy I am, how well I grinded out there and, and how well I played. It's, uh, it means so much. Thank you. We're going to go two more questions right here to Sports Illustrated for Kids. First, congratulations. And so after being down two to Will after 11, was there ever any feelings of doubt or did that only motivate you more? Yeah, sure. There's a little bit, you know, um, you know, there's seven, eight holes left. Um, you know, you've got plenty of time still, but uh, you'd rather be too clear than, than too behind, obviously. Um, I think for, my, for me, like, I just felt if I could just keep hitting the greens and give myself puts, um, my, my put in a takeover and, and I'd make a couple coming in and uh, fortunately that's what I did um, and uh, yeah it worked out nicely we're going to go to the right Brendan uh, well first of all when you said you turned and said you hate it which part of it do you hate everything <laughs> <laughs> no it's just like you know the for me for me last night you leave the golf course I'm tied for the lead for the US Open you then sit in there stewing with it the whole night, the whole evening, and I slept, I slept brilliant, but like, you just kind of relax in and you're still thinking about it, you're thinking about it, you're thinking about it, and you're just trying to tell yourself, just, just stop, just have a break, just stop thinking about it, it's not, it's not there yet. And but at the same time, you kind of want to go, you want to play it like straight away. Um, and in the morning, I'm sat watching the golf and I'm like, oh, is it time to go yet? Is it time to go yet? And, and then the time comes and then it's like, oh shit, like, we're ready to go now. Like, I better start hitting some good shots and oh, hopefully I hit some good shots. And it just, it's just, there's just a lot of stuff going on. Um, and I said it yesterday, it's, you know, I, I just don't think people realize how hard it is to, to win, a, win a major. Mm -hmm. There's only four of them um, a year. And um, it's, yeah, it just takes takes something a bit extra. And, and I couldn't help but notice when, uh, when you were going back to your bag after you were done, um, and you took your watch out, and at that time, I was your, your hands were like they were going. Were and they? I, yeah, and I, and I couldn't tell if that it's was news the, to me. The adrenaline <laughs> of the moment, or if that like, did you feel that way on eighteen? Like, how do you handle adrenaline? No, I mean, the, the, particularly the put on eighteen, I was just like, just give it a chance, but cozy it. Don't don't smash it. Like I've smashed a few today. Um, for me, dry, hitting and chipping and everything and isn't an issue uh, whilst I'm playing. It, it's the putting. It's a little bit more. I've noticed over the last few years, there's sort of it's just a little bit more. You're a little bit more nervous on it. There's a little bit. Obviously, it takes more control. So um, I feel like it's a little bit harder. Um, but yeah, I mean, on the whole, I managed to sort of keep them at bay for the most part. 
Um, and I, I was just happy that I made some coming in um, when I wasn't necessarily feeling the, the best. We're going to go to one more question, but first, what club did you hit out of the bunker on 18? 9-9. Nine, nine. Thank you. Right here, last question, Kevin. Matt, it seems like your personality has always been humble and kind of self-deprecating. How do you, when you're, that's your natural way of being, convince yourself to be arrogant in the moments when you need it as an athlete? I mean, my, my parents, you know, I wouldn't be here without them. They did such an amazing job with me, and, and that was the thing they always taught me, to, to be humble and uh, to be down to earth. And, and if they're not bringing me back down to earth, my friends are. Um, and that's, you know, that's always been me. Uh, we, it doesn't matter what we're doing, how well I'm playing. I'll leave it tonight, and they'll give me abuse about something. I know they will. Um, and uh, my friend's just nodding in the back there. And um, But I just, I, I don't know. I've always felt like I had it. I've always been competitive, and that comes from my dad as well. My dad was always competitive with us as juniors, and um, I just love winning. You know, I absolutely love winning, and I don't care who it is. Like, I just want to beat everyone. And although it doesn't come across and... Like you know, as, as I don't show it much because I like to be quite reserved. Yeah, I just love beating everyone. <laughs> it's as simple as that. I mean, and anyone, anyone else on tour would say the same thing. Um, you know, that's that's why the guys are the best, and that's why they, they play so well. It's just just love love winning. So, well, Matt, Matt, congratulations! You are a U.S. Thank Open you. champion. Thank you.